Assembly Calendar, I'm Mike Friesan, and with us for our program today, Assemblyman Tom Alfano. Tom Alfano represents the 21st Assembly District in New York State, an Assembly District that includes parts of Nassau County. We thank you folks all across Long Island for joining us today for our particular focus on the Elmont community. And we want to thank you folks, uh, especially all through Elmont, for joining us for our show today. And Tom Alfano, thanks for being here. Good to be here, Mike. We've got a lot to get caught up on. A lot of fascinating events have been taking place in the Elmont community since the last time you were here. We're going to get caught up on an awful lot of those on our program today. But we start off with some of what's taking place here at the state capitol in Albany. You spent an awful lot of your time here between the beginning of a year and the middle point of a year, come you know, January 1st to around the 4th of July, and a, and a lot of things that happen here impact on the people that you represent in the 21st Assembly District. Right now, the state legislature finds itself already in the middle of its budget debate. Perhaps the most important thing we do in, in the state legislature is a budget. It's a multi-billion dollar document that uh, the most important thing it does is provide uh, hospital funding oftentimes and uh, and also education. Aid to education is something that we in Nassau and Suffolk County take extremely seriously. And we always have to fight, unfortunately, to make sure that we get our fair share of these important uh, state tax dollars because the more money we get from the state of New York, the less our property taxes are. So obviously this is a mission that we're all on and uh, united bipartisanly in uh, Nassau and Suffolk. Let's take a look at a timeline, if you will, some of the events that happen during a budget debate. Some have already happened of what you're about to see. We'll get some reaction from Tom Alfano on the particulars of Governor Spitzer's budget proposal this year, and then we'll be back with more of our program today in Assembly Calendar. The governor has already presented his spending ideas to the legislature for its consideration. A countdown clock has been put in place to help focus lawmakers on the task at hand. Legislative hearings are underway, featuring officials from across the state, giving testimony on how state government can help them. These are very difficult economic times for New York State and for the United States as a whole, but certain things we have to ensure. We have to ensure that the children of New York State, including my district and Nassau and Suffolk counties, receive a good, solid, basic education. And in order to do that, we have to receive our fair share of state aid dollars. It's our concern in Nassau and Suffolk County that Long Island continue to maintain its shares at their percentage that we received last year of state aid. This is something we're prepared to fight for. This is something that's extremely important to our taxpayers and to our children, to the economic future of Long Island and all of New York State. The debate then heads to joint budget conference committees, which consist of members of both Senate and Assembly, to draw up a legislative response to the governor's proposed plan. And there's even more after that. The legislature, the both houses need to approve the budget, and then the governor can veto what the legislature's done, and then the legislature can override. So it goes back and forth for quite a while here. It's the most important thing that we do. It's a complex process. It's an annual event, and um, it's something that I said in that, in that clip, my own comments. I mean, Long Island, for us, it's all about shares and educational dollars. And uh, we're prepared to fight again. The governor, unfortunately, thinks that uh, everyone on Long Island is super wealthy, like another a governor, we had Mario Cuomo, and it's not true. People in my district have two or three jobs to afford to live in Nassau County to send their children to the great schools in southwest Nassau, like the Elmont schools. You know, that's their investment. That's their hope, their future, their children. But we have to get our fair share from New York State. Otherwise, the taxes will just spiral upward, and people uh, will not be able to afford to live in Long Island. So this debate is uh, really just getting underway. Uh, hearings, the, where we are right now in that timeline you saw earlier, the hearings are still being held here where the legislature is taking a close look at the individual parts of the budget, including education. You're feeling good about Long Island's chance of recouping some of that money that's missing out of the governor's budget for schools in Long Island? You know, in this business, like most real businesses, it's, you're only as good as your, as your current effort. In other words, you can't rest on your laurels. I can't sit here now and promise the people of uh, the 21st Assembly District that we'll be made whole, that we'll do as well as uh, last year. Because, on, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, the budget is part of an overall, you know, status is how the health of the economy. And I don't think you have to be a Nobel uh, award-winning economist to realize the state of our economy nationally in New York State is very bad. We have a $4 billion deficit in New York State. Um, we have all kinds of structural problems with our budgets in New York State. Uh, we have a national, uh, we're bordering on a recession. So these are not economic good times. I'm sure my constituents realize that, and so do people. So we have to tighten our belts as a state. We have to cut where we have to cut, where we can cut, and then we have to allocate you know, finite resources to important things like health and education. 
there are other battles that have been uh, battle lines that have been drawn here for Tom Alfano as this 2008 legislative session's gotten underway. Tom Alfano, you are also trying to help out the people known as first responders in your communities who have some concerns about some hazardous materials that are making their way through the community. Yeah, oddly enough, I mean, uh, we, we there, currently, when a radioactive uh, shipment of, of waste goes, gets transported on the rail lines throughout my district and throughout Nassau and Suffolk County, the, uh, the local communities, the villages, which include the first responders, the police, the EMTs, the fire service, they're not aware of it. They're not giving, given a heads up by the MTA. That's plain old wrong. We had a press conference w recently to draw attention to this problem, and I'm confident that during this legislative session in 2008, we will correct this problem so that when a radioactive shipment or dangerous uh, chemicals are transported throughout Nassau and Suffolk counties, the villages, the first responders, the mayors of these communities that would be on the line if something uh, were to happen would be prepared and given 24 hours notice. And Tom Alfano and some of those local officials, including school representatives, who are also very concerned about this, since many of those lines run right by their buildings, uh, all met together at the Stuart Manor School. Let's take a look and a listen to some of what Tom Alfano had to say. Ladies and gentlemen, when a freight train goes along these lines and transports hazardous materials, including radioactive materials, the people in these villages along the, the rail lines especially the mayors and the first responders, have absolutely no notice of this occurrence. And that's a problem. It's a problem because in the eventuality or the event of a disaster, a derailment, or some other problem, and, and a leakage and a spillage that takes place that would jeopardize the people who live in these villages, the first responders would be, would be uh, called upon to answer this, uh, tra to this tragic circumstance, and they wouldn't know about it. They wouldn't know what they were dealing with. And that's plain wrong. The counties of Nassau and Suffolk received notice, and we're here today simple to plug a hole in the law and make sure that from, from now on, once we pass this legislation, that the villages receive the same courtesy, 24-hour uh, notice, when there will be shipment of hazardous materials traveling through the rail lines uh, along these, uh, these village routes. It's as simple as that. That seems to make sense. If some people can know, why, why can't the local people know? And the local people are the ones who would be the ones to first respond in the event of a disaster. So it's total common sense, but, you know, there are loopholes, and we're here to make sure we find them and fix them. All right. Now, now's the fun part of our program, if you folks will. This is when we get to take a look and a listen to some of the events that have been happening around the 21st Assembly District and around particularly some of the schools and other uh, uh, facilities in the Elmont community. We're going to start off now with a, uh, a nice event that was uh, put together to uh, honor uh, the Sawanica football team for a terrific season they had. And as you can see, we start off by taking a look at Tom Alfano, who was at that event, and who had, uh, I'm sure, some words of inspiration for those fine young men. No question about it. Uh, it was a great uh, Sawanica High School football dinner. Uh, Judy Van Haren chaired the event with the Sawanica Booster Club. Uh, of course, Coach Reed was in attendance, does a great job over there. Uh, they're known as the Indians at Sawanica, and they had a pretty good season. In fact, uh, three, three uh, standout people, Dominique uh, White, Bilal Butt, and quarterback Pat Yanucci had really great seasons. And this was at Koenigs, which is in Floral Park in the 21st District. I know you always uh, talk to about how when you... When kids are in school, it's not enough to focus on one thing, like sports, just football. You, you've got to focus on your academics, too, and it can't, it's not good if it's just the academics. It's nice to have uh, sports involved, too. No question about it. I mean, uh, it's a combination, you know, the old uh, sound mind, sound body mm -hmm. of, the, of the ancients, uh, and, and it really works. And um, this, there was an award uh, program that featured coaching staff giving out awards to players for the outstanding achievement during the season. Um, it was really great. One of my staff members, uh, Rick uh, Georges, who was a Swanica football star, was all Long Island and, and all Newsday. Uh, he was in attendance also. There were about 200 students there and parents. It was a nice evening. That's really, it looks like a beautiful uh, room and a nice event. It looks like everybody uh, uh, had a terrific time. And We talk all the time about how nice it is that the, um, uh, the, the kids are honored and recognized for their accomplishments. That's an important part of the entire process. No question, Mike. I mean, these kids remember this forever, and, um, you know, it really goes into molding their character, and, you know, they realize teamwork, fair play, 
discipline, hard work, you know, all the qualities that are required on the football field are good service for 